Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's all stand. Uh, turn our hymnals to page number 221, 221, and we'll sing Happiness is to Know the Savior, page 221. Happiness is to know the Savior, living a life within his favor, having a change of my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is a new creation, Jesus and me, in close relation, having a part in his salvation. Happiness is the Lord, real joy is mine, no matter if the teardrops start, I found the secret. It's Jesus in my heart. Happiness is to be forgiven. Living a life that's worth the living. Taking a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Happiness is the Lord. Amen. Page number 428, page 428. We'll sing all three of Heavenly Sunlight, page number 400. Walking in sunlight all of my journey on the first. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain through the deep end. And Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee. Promise divine that Never can fail. It's heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. Shadows around me and shadows above me never conceal my Savior and God, he is the light, in him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to his side, it's heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine, in the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, it's heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with Glory divine, hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Amen, let me see. All right, good singing tonight. Good to see everybody is able to make it out tonight. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10, Brother Kurt will have our Bible reading after our missionary. And we just want to give one a little bit of a heads up. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have the Merrill family. They'll be with us, I believe, Sunday, September the 13th. They'll be with us then uh, for a few days. So looking forward to seeing them. Keep uh, Mrs. Merrill in prayer. She's been battling cancer. And uh, she's been doing some natural things. And uh, helping her kind of get through that. Uh, so just keep her in prayer if you would. Also, uh, Dr. Mike Lighty. And my chiropractor, we've been praying for him for some time. He's going you know, really battle Lou Gehrig's disease in a pretty bad way. <laughs> he's lost uh, a tremendous amount of weight. I think he's down to 125 pounds. And uh, he's really a good trooper uh, through this. Great Christian man. So just keep him in prayer if you would. All right. Brother I'd like you to pray this week for uh, Ken Creech. You know, he's down there on the Gulf Coast. 
We got the hurricanes going in there. Pray for he and his wife's safety for their home and everything. Pray for uh, the ministry, uh, Seaport Ministries, that uh, their equipment and everything will be undamaged, their buildings and so forth. And pray for Ken. He had uh, sinus surgery here just a few months ago, and he's had a little bit of setback with that. He's, if you knew him, he's quite a trooper. He's ripping the wearing to go to, to get back on board the ships and uh, give the gospel to the seamen, but it seems like he's always been being hindered by one thing or another. So just pray that the Lord will remove all the uh, obstacles out of his way and he'll get the lead some souls to the Lord. Okay, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, we'll begin reading in verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, we indeed do come before you tonight. We ask uh, for your healing, Lord, for the many that are sick among us, those who have gone through surgeries, those who may be getting ready to go through surgery. I especially bring Naomi uh, before you this tonight, Lord, to heal her over her cancer, dear Father, and anybody else, Lord, that we don't know all the, all the details, and some people are reluctant to, to mention any problems they're having. We just ask you all undertake on their behalf, Lord, we might rejoice in you. Now bless the service tonight, dear Lord. Give the pastor the, the words to say in the power from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand down one more time and take our hymnals and turn them to page 412, page 412. We sing the first and the last. So page 412. Stepping in the light, page 412. Trying to walk in the steps of the Savior. Trying to follow our Savior and King. Shaping our lives by His blessed example. Happy, how happy the songs that we bring. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, led in paths of the light. Trying to walk in the step of the Savior, upwards of love will follow our guide. When we shall see the King in his beauty, happy, how happy, our place at his side. How beautiful to walk in the step of the Savior, stepping in the light, stepping in the light. How beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior, let him pass over light. Jesus is the sweetest name I know, amen? The most sweetest name I know. We're going to sing that chorus tonight. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus is the sweetest name I know, and he's just the same as his loving name. That's the reason why I love him so, because Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Sing it, here we go. And Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same as his lovely name. And that's the reason why I love him so. Because Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Amen. Maybe see it. All right, very good. Good singing tonight. And if you uh, go ahead and get out your plan of salvation sheets, um, does anyone not get one? Kurt has them in the back, and one raise your hand if you did not get one tonight. 
He did not get one. All right, Dalton, get didn't get one, brother Kirk. Get to Dalton over there, right there. Anybody else not get one? Uh, Geraldo didn't get one, and Buck didn't get one. All right. Right on the front. Kurt gets some exercise right here tonight. tonight Dalton, Geraldo, Buck. Anybody else? Size them three. Anybody else not get one? Who else did? Good. All right. Again, as I uh, mentioned uh, last week, I had only I intended maybe to take uh, about a week on this. This will be our third week, and uh, we. About a month ago, we brought out the Heritage Baptist Church Fire Department. Remember all of you that came in the front and talked about the importance of soul winning and how we are to be a fire station for, you could say, for eternal souls that are hanging in the balance. You need to literally snatch them up from a real hell. And this is almost, you could say, like a, a business person, a salesman, if you would. And uh, But you're not really selling anything. You're trying to give them something to most important thing that we could ever give them, and that's the gospel. So tonight, again, we're just going to go over this for the final time. Last week, um, we did it. We bought Barb here. Barb got saved so much, she should even come back tonight. And uh, But tonight, I'm going to go through, review a little bit tonight. She's probably watching the internet. I had to pick on her again, even not being here. But uh, I'm going to review a little bit tonight. And then if uh, I don't get about, I plan on going through the plan again, just to show, unless I get a bunch of volunteers that want to come up and we run out of time that wants to go through the plan of salvation. And, um, we'll see if you do. But tonight, again, we're just going to go on by means of review, review again, repetitions, the greatest teacher. Again, there's many plans of salvation that you can share with someone to try to get them saved, to lead them to Christ. This is the plan that I've used for over 20, 20-some 20 years, between 20 and 25, closer to 25 years. And uh, this is the one where you kind of kind of catch a person, if you would. What I mean, catch them, kind of get them to realize that they're unsaved. That's, and if they're not, that's the objective here. If a person's not saved, to get them to realize they are. Because I've talked to so many people out there. They think they're saved. They think they're on their way to heaven. But they're part of the Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 and 22 crowd. That they, they say, Lord, Lord. It says, many have said that they, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in the name and cast out devil and the many wonderful works and started naming the things that they have done. So tonight, again, we're going to try to go through the plan by means of review. These sheets starting out, or if you're going like door-to-door soul winning. It's not a popular thing to do right now, COVID-19 and all that stuff going around, but this is the plan of salvation. And this is the most important thing you could ever learn. Again, I said this last week, I'll repeat that again too. I could have brought up a different series to start on on Wednesday nights or brought up a, a, a different book to teach verse by verse. But I thought, why rush through this most important subject there is to teach on? I mean, the Bible is important for us to read and memorize and study and learn and hide in our heart. But this is the most important subject there is. This is the, this is the go-to of... of um, the foundation of Christianity. So we're going to get to it tonight. Then We're going to skip to the first four, but just jump to number five, whether you're talking to a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a stranger, someone on the phone. I did this before. I used this plan. Many of you know Angela Anderson that comes here and her dad, Sam, that sits in the back right where Tom's sitting every Sunday. They're here and I went through the plan of salvation on the phone. I just called her up on the phone one night randomly. Called her up, just like I talked last week about Grace Brown. I randomly, 18 years ago almost, called her up and went through this plan of salvation on the phone. I started asking her this question, cut to the chase. Number five, if you died, are you 100% sure you go to heaven or would you have some doubt? And I want every one of us tonight to kind of think about this. Think about someone you know. 
in your family or a friend or acquaintance of yours where you could ask this question, if you died, are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? Or what? Or do you have some doubt? And then they'll give you an answer. How many have ever asked this question to somebody before? Let me see your hands. Okay. Many of you have asked that question. Help me out at church tonight. What are some answers that you've gotten back as to why? You can see number six. You ask them that question. Then you say, why? Why? Whatever they say. If they say, yeah, I am or no, I'm not. You say, why? What are some answers that you have gotten back over the years? Anybody want to care? Brother Geraldo? I prayed before. I prayed before. Okay. That's an answer. How many times? Kathy? Good person. Good person. Got baptized. Sheila? Go to church. Yeah, standard answers. Yeah. You, 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 sometimes you can hear some crazy off-the-wall answers. But yeah, those are kind of some standard answers. And then if you know if they say anything besides, yeah, I, I, I asked Christ in my heart to be my Savior. Now I'm going to heaven. I got born again and they give you an answer like that. You know that they're saved because my name's written in Lamb's Book of Life because I was a sinner saved by the grace of God, receiving as my Savior. And they'll tell you the day. And sometimes it doesn't get in that detail, but you know if they're saved or not by the answer they give you. And if they give you an answer like, man, I'll, I'll pray one time, or, you know, like I pray to prayer doesn't save anybody. But you know, if they say I pray to prayer one time because I'm a sinner, and they give you the answer, you don't need to go on. But if they say, because I'm a. I'm a good person, or I got baptized, or I go to church, you know. You know you're dealing with an unsafe person. Yeah, my dad, is there a question? Yeah. Uh, after you ask the question, why, how many times has that person got defense? That's a good question. Really, I don't recall someone getting offended. I never recall anyone ever getting offended. The thousands of times I asked that. Now, maybe out of sight of mine, maybe, but should, because I don't remember one that's very rare then. And um, because what they do when they give me an answer, then they give me an answer, I just cut to the chase. I don't him haul around or anything. I will, maybe because I cut, I don't give them a chance to get offended. I don't know. I never saw anybody ever get offended by that. So I said, let me share a few verses with you real quick. It shows you how you can know for sure that when you die, you'll go to heaven. And I don't turn my Bible. I didn't run a New Testament on purpose again tonight. But uh, I don't turn there. I just quote 1 John 5, 13, part of the verse. Says, Fathers, you may know you have eternal life. So whether you're talking to a classmate, a co-worker, a family member, a neighbor, a friend, acquaintance, just cold turkey soul winning, just say, let me share a few verses with you. And you either open your New Testament Remember, I said I don't ever, I've never just opened my Bible unless I'm in the front in invitation time. Because this is this is powerful. This book is powerful. And it can kind of scare people off. So you have my New Testament, I whip it out, or even I got it memorized in my heart, this plan. I don't want to scare anyone off, but I just start quoting it. So again, they give me an answer like Sheila had said they go to church. I know they're not safe. So I said, let me share a few verses real quick on how you can know for sure when you die, you go to heaven. And you can know, 1 John 5, 13 says, you may know you have eternal life. And I start out, Romans chapter, chapter 3, verse 10 says, as it's written, there's none righteous, no, not one. And righteous means perfect as you're going through the list, number one there. The Bible says that none of us are. And I said, Romans 3, 23 kind of says the same thing, number two on our list. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Who sinned? We all have, yeah. We all have. And, and we're all sinners. And right there, I ask them and say, of course, you know what sin means. I don't try to make anyone feel foolish. You always try to, you always try to make, almost put yourself down. The person you're talking like, you're not putting them down. I was going to put yourself down as much as anything. You don't ever... Want to try to put them on the defense. You want to make them feel offended. They're already going to kind of feel uncomfortable as it is if the Lord's work on their heart. 
And so, so of course, you know what sin means. You know, it's doing wrong, like stealing, cheating, lying. And I get them that question. As you're looking, what's the question I ask them that's the trigger question, the trigger point? What is it? Have you ever told a lie before? Because if they're following along, if they're not saved, it's not like I got you in a little bit, but it is kind of like I got you here in a little bit. You know. So, again, you've told a lie before. Number three, then, the first part of the verse, Romans 6.23a. Anybody know it? 6.23a. For the wages of sin is death. So you're going along, a wage is something you earn. Who well, we earn because we sin is death. And I tell them, I, I have it written down here, but sometimes I ask them. Have you, you ever thought about why we die? Now, have you ever thought about that much before? Because for the longest time, I really didn't. Have you ever thought about why we all die? We all die because we all sin. You don't go through the great length and start waxing eloquently about the curse of sin. But it's what it is. We all die because we all sin. And I go on and say, some, though, will face a second death. I don't tell them yet they're going to unless they get saved, but I just say some will face a second death. You know what death means, you know. Death is like a, a physical death. It's like when so, and I try to illustrate it in their mind. It's, it's like someone's like in a casket, and you know they're, they're there after they die physically. You see them there. That's a physical death. But I go on and say some... Some will face a second death, a spiritual death, just like last week. Look where we're at, church. Carl, you go in here. Last week, London cried at the perfect time for me. I got to Revelation 21 8, and we'll always get distractions at the very beginning, at the end, or most of the time, right here where we're at. at Revelation 21 8. I didn't tell London to do it again tonight. She did. All right. So, Revelation 21 and verse number 8, talking about the second death. As I, I was saying before London interrupted me perfect, perfectly again, I, I explained to the physical A second death is after someone dies physically, it's a separation from God. And this eternal hell, it's called the lake of fire. And Revelation 21 8 gives us, I explained this to him. Gives us eight examples of sinners after they die physically will be in the second death called the lake of fire. Anyone have Revelation 21 8 down? Brother Kirk? Okay. The Bible says, here, go ahead, I was going to quote it, but you can read it through there. Church, sometimes I do this. Sometimes I, if it's a letter, if I see the person has the full undivided attention of mine and they're paying attention here, she's just listening and maybe because maybe almost enthusiastic, I, I can almost kind of br I'll break that verse down a little bit in detail of each one. I say, but the fearful, you know what fearful means? You know, it's the, God doesn't give someone a spirit of fear. That comes from the devil, the fearful and the unbelieving and those who don't believe in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And the abominable, that's different murder or different excuse me, sins in the Bible that God calls an abomination and murderers. And whoremongers, that's sexual sin. Whoremongers and sorcerers, and that's drug use. And idolaters, that's anything you put in front of God, it's an idol. And all liars, it says, shall have. Don't say may. And I broke all eight examples of sinners down there. It doesn't say these might have their part. It says, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And right there, if you're looking along, I get them now, the, the illustration I use. I ask them, say, how many murders do you commit before you be, be called a murder? I'll ask them, now, how many murders will someone commit before you become a murderer? And nine out of ten, they'll say one. How many banks do you rob to be a bank robber? 
No, one, nine out of ten, one. How many lies would you, be, would you tell to be a liar? Nine out of ten. You say, why? And say, I got them. And a lot of times I have my New Testament open or I'll requote again. So according to the Bible, you, and I say, according, that's not according to me or you, but according to the Bible, so you would at least be in one of these verses. I don't even right away say which one. At least one of these verses, right? The journal, I say, at least in that last one. And they're kind of, generally, if the Lord's work on their heart, they kind of know where I'm going. I say, yeah, at least that, then I say, that last one, right? The, according to the Bible, then if you died right now, where does the Bible say that you would go? Again, a majority of the time, I think the whole time they're following along, yeah, I go to hell. I go that. I go there. I go to the lake of fire. Hell, the eter- they cry the eternal hell. Yeah, the, so then once they do that, well, we can go. Romans 5, eight, if they say no, again, if I see that I'm not going to offend them and pay attention, I don't like giving up, I'll try to come back around and I'll quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9 or some other verses like that. But never, ever, ever one time. They get to there, they follow along, and they if they don't say, oh, I go to hell if I die, I go to the lake of fire. Never one time did they ever get saved. Never one time. But, they follow along, I go to hell. The Romans 5, 8. Anybody know Romans 5, 8? Brother Kurt? Now I'll quote that verse. I say, and I say, you do believe that, right? That Christ died for us to follow the law. Then I go to Romans 6 23b. I'll quote the whole verse. For the wages of sin is death. And I say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that word gift is important. And then I pull out a gospel track. Gift. And I s- I'll explain to you, a gift. A gift, as you read it right here, is, is free. It's free. Why did Christ die for us all? Because He knew that we were going to face that second death. That lake of fire, the eternal hell. And God loves us. and doesn't want us to go to go to there. So I pull out my track and I say, guess what? It's free. And uh, free. London, amen me. It's free. It means you don't earn it. You can't do anything for it. Get baptized, go to church, be good. You can't do anything for it. And I'll illustrate it again a little bit. And I'll offer it to them. And if they take it, it's yours. It's yours. This is yours now. I said, you know what? I didn't ask you to give me $5 for it. Because if you did, you'd be paying me for it. You'd be earning it yourself. See, here's what's going to happen, church. If you can get to heaven by being good, giving money to your church, going to church, you get to heaven, you can be saying, yeah, I'm here because of me. We don't go to heaven because of anything that we do. For by grace are you saved through faith, not, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. How many are glad you're going to be going to heaven when you die, when the Lord comes? It's nothing that we do. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ and what He did. And so, I offer it to Him. I explain it to Him. It's, it's, this is yours now. You didn't pay me for it. You didn't do anything for it. I offered it to you. It's my gift to you. You took it. It's now yours. It's a gift. It says, how you go to heaven is you get Jesus. You take the gift of Jesus and take it into your heart. And how you do that, I quote Romans 10.9. Anybody got Romans 10.9? A little longer one. Romans 10.9. That of thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Not might be saved, but shall be saved. And I ask him that then. You do believe that Jesus died on a cross for you, right? And his buried and rose again the third day. You do believe that, right? And they follow me then. So if you believe that, Romans 10, 13. Anybody got that down memorized? Romans 10, 13. Anybody? For whosoever, Cindy? Now, whosoever means anybody. Whoever I'm talking to. Again. Several, I didn't do this now because I'm teaching this to you again tonight. I'm going over it. But whoever I'm talking to, several times I say the person's name. But why do I say the person's name I'm talking to? Anybody remember last week why I do that? Anybody remember? 
Because when you say a person's name, a lot of it kind of just jogs, jogs, kind of gets their attention. Sometimes you, whenever I preach a sermon, a lot of times, sometimes I, I, I say people's name in the congregation if you catch me doing that. I, I don't do it just to be doing it. Generally, I kind of was in speech class, I just taught this over the years. Because when you hear your name, it kind of jogs your memory. People don't do this, but a lot of times, going, they went through the lines sometimes over the years. I mean, I, gosh, I mean, that, that sermon that spoke to me, sometimes, it's when I, they say it to me, when I've said their name during a message, during a message, because somehow it just kind of cap, captures your attention a little bit. You see a person. So when you're going through the plan of salvation, you're what we're talking about several times. You know, you, you mention their name. When I get to the end, I say, "Who can be saved?" And I'll say the person's name for Lee, for whosoever, anybody, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you went through the whole plan. But go to the second page there. You went through the whole plan, but I don't want someone to be just praying some prayer, not knowing what they're doing. I want someone to truly be born again, truly be saved. So I kind of come full circle again. I'll tell them. I'm not beating around the bush. I said, let me sum up everything real quick, whoever I'm talking to. And I'll tell them my testimony kind of real briefly. For me, it was on August 8, 1994. I realized, one, I'm a sinner. Because I'm a sinner. I was going to go to hell if I died. I believe Jesus died for me. I believed that if you call upon Him to come in your heart to save you, you do that. And I did that. I asked Jesus to come in my heart to save me. And I say the person's name and says, you right now are where I was at then. I say, number one, you know you're a sinner, right? You following along? Yeah. If they're going to get saved, they got to know they're a sinner. Amen? Then secondly then, and I say their name, said then, if you were to die right now, according to the Bible, and they've already said this, and I remind them that, but according to the Bible, if you were to die right now, where did the Bible say you would go? The following out, I'd go to hell. You do believe you just died on a cross for you, right? And if you caught upon the Lord to come in your heart to save you, where would you go to in heaven? And kind of cut to the chase. So right now then, whoever I'm talking to, do you want to ask Jesus to come in your heart to save you? And listen, real, this is a tip. I again, I didn't put this here, but here, right when I ask him that, I say this sometimes. I say because because I can lead you in a prayer to do that if you would like to do that. And here's why I do that. I feel led because sometimes, generally, if you're talking with someone, it almost scares them. Generally, they probably never prayed before. I say, do you want to pray a prayer? And they, people. Have, Few times I said, "Yeah, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I don't know how to pray." You say, "I can lead you though in a prayer." And I I kind of try to make them feel comfortable. So I did this thousands of times with people before. When I say that, I never say it with the intent of trying to uh, uplift me. I kind of try to want to make them feel comfortable knowing that they're not the first time that someone's ever did this before. And I said, "I can lead you in a prayer for doing that if you would like." And if they say, yeah, I want to do this, then let's pray. And many of you that here last week heard me with Barb, how, how I do I pray. And I immediately, I don't pray the sinner's prayer, one like this is quoted here. I talk to God at first and ask God to save them and kind of get the Holy Spirit working on their hearts. And I transition from talking to God to talking to them. And like clockwork, they'll follow along. And I'll lead them praying that sinner's prayer. And then when we're done, as we did last week, I go through these verses of the plan of salvation here. The last verse, Romans 10, 13, on the last page. And then Hebrews 13, 5, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake thee. And I go through that. And John 3, 36, He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. How long is everlasting, church? Forever, forever, yes. And then I get the information down that we did last week. That's what I do. I plan on doing that again again tonight. 
It's the most important subject ever right here. But before I do, I'm just going to ask anyone, if you would like to come up right here in front of this Lord's Supper table, you don't have to. I would never make anyone. I wouldn't want to embarrass anybody for anything. So I'm not making anyone, not calling you to do that. But would anyone want to come to the front here and try to go through this plan? And I know you probably won't be perfect if you have this plan before, but if you maybe allow me to stop and maybe give a pointer here or there to help someone else to go through the plan. And if there's no volunteers, then I planned on doing it anyway. Anyone? want to raise your hand at this time and come to the front and I'll get an unsafe first stick. I'll pick one or one of your choice. Anybody want to try this plan tonight? Go on once. Go on twice. Your place is again. All right. This is the soul winner. All right. I need a volunteer. Last week, I called Barb up here. So she came up here with fear and intrepidation, and I knew it. An unsafe person here tonight to come up to the front. Um, let's see. My dad, would you want to? Would you want me calling somebody else and, out of honor and respect? My dad. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. All right. Very good. Come up to the front. It's like I don't even know him. That's what it's going to be tonight. Like I don't know him. All right. Follow along, guys. Go back to page number one, the first page. Initially, if you're not there yet. Follow along. He's going to be a little a bit easy, kind of just going through, you know, to help it, uh, the plan run a little bit smoother. You can say whatever he wants, but run smoother. Uh, kind of going through like you know the gist of what to say. All right. All right. Like we're kind of passive. All this, sitting each other at the park, just meeting each other for the first time. How you doing? Okay. All right. Been better. Been better. All right. I got. I want to share some with you. If you don't mind. Um, got to cut to the chase real quick. What, what was your name again? If you don't mind. Gary. Gary. Uh, Gary, most important thing in life is what I'm going to ask you. And that's if you're to die. Are you 100% sure that you go to heaven or would you have some, some doubt? I might have some doubt. Some doubt? Okay. Uh, what do you think it takes for someone to, to go to heaven by chance? What's your, what's your initial thoughts? I think you're a good person. Good person? Okay. All right. Um, I just want to share some things with you real quick. First John 5.13 says you may know you have eternal life. You guys can go on the second page there. Uh, first thing, Romans chapter 3, verse 10. The Bible says, Gary, that as is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Righteousness is perfect. God says that none of us are. I'm certainly not. I'd be the first to admit that. I'm sure you said that you're not perfect either. The, the next verse, Romans 3, 23, kind of says the same thing a little bit. It says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know what sin means. Like steal, cheating, lying for examples. Gary, have you ever told a lie before, to be honest? Oh, a couple. couple? Okay. Be honest now. Okay. couple. I don't know, but he's being honest on that one. All right, All right couple. Well, Romans 6.23 talks about that sin. It says, for the wages of sin is death. And uh, death is a physical death. It's one, like we see when someone dies and they're like at a, a casket, and a service at a funeral home or a church or, or a funeral. But it's also a second death. It's after that. There's a physical death. And there's also a second of being separated, separated from God. And Revelation 21, 8 talks about the second death. Um, it says the fear, eight, because eight examples of sinners, and someone's going to face the second death here. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. Now, it says, shall have, let's say might have, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And Gary, let me ask you a quick question on that. 
how many murders did one commit before you call a murder? Probably one. One. And how many banks would you rob to be a bank robber? One. One. And how many lies would you tell to be a liar? How many? Probably one. Probably one. Okay. Well, uh, not trying to pry and get into your business or anything, but from our short conversation, Gary, you, you probably be at least in one of those categories, right? Yes. And so according to the Bible, if you were to die right now, where does the Bible say that you would go? Probably hell. Go to hell. And God loves you and doesn't want you to go there, and I don't either, so I'm sharing this with you. And God loves you so much, He gave His Son, so you don't have to go. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth His love toward us, and why were you yet sinners? Christ died for us. Why did He die for us? Because He doesn't want us to go to the lake of fire, face that second death. Well, Romans 6, 23, Gary says, For the way to sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want heaven's a, a gift. It's like, I want to give this to you. You can read, the, you can read this later. I'm going to stop it. Why is it important for me to tell him he can read it later? Remember, who remembers? So you don't get distracted. That's a good thing to read. It's like having a New Testament for them to read is good, but they can read that later. You don't want to read them right now. You don't pay attention. It's like, that's my gift to you, Gary. It's free. Now, I didn't ask you to give me like a dollar for that. Because one, you probably say, I ain't giving you a dollar anyway. But you'd be earning it yourself. It's not like a gift then. If I say, wash my car here, then you can have it. You say, I ain't going to do that anyway. But if you did that, to get that, it's not a gift. You'd be earning it yourself. And to go into heaven, it's free. It's a gift. Too many people think they got to be good or do this or do that, but it's a gift. And a gift is Jesus. And just like you took that for me to read later, it's my gift to you. God gave us a gift to go to heaven. The gift is Jesus. And just like, again, you took that for me, you have to take Jesus and take him into your heart. And how you do that, Romans 10.9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You, you do believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, right? Yes. And how do you be saved again? Who can be saved? Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is it, turn to the next page. So Gary, let's sum up real quick. For me, it was August 8, 1994. I realized, number one, I'm a sinner. On that day, I realized that. Still not perfect, but because I'm a sinner, August 8, 1994, I realized I was going to go to hell. I believed Jesus died for me on the cross and knew from that verse I was shown, just like I showed you, if I would call upon the Lord to come in my heart. He promised me He'd save me, and I did that. Again, Almost 20, over 26 years ago now. But Gary, right now, you are, right now where I was then, you know that you're a sinner, right? Yes. And you already said this, but according to the Bible, who did die? Where does the Bible say that you go? I go to hell. And you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, yes. right? And if you called upon the Lord to come in your heart to save you, where would you go then? Go to heaven. Yeah, and, if, and if you don't ask you to come in your heart, where will you go then, Gary, if you don't? Probably to hell. No. And so right now, Gary, do you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart? Sure. Okay. But I've been a pretty good person all these okay. years. Okay. Well, again, again, that's a good question then on that. Throwing a little curveball here just before we pray. And uh, um, that's important. That's a, that's a good question. Um. You've been a good person. You made a good statement. But I always do this, church. I always go back. They say something like that. By the way, you know what? I could have rushed him through, probably prayed a prayer with him right now. But I never, ever want to do that. Because if in his mind, if he's going to pray a prayer, in his mind he's thinking, you know, I'm a pretty good person. That's how I'm going to go to heaven. And because as he's come in my heart, he's not saved. Because... 
you don't put being a good person on a shelf of salvation and good heaven and Jesus. It's 100% Jesus and Him alone to be saved. How many churches out there do you know they'll teach the Gospel some, but they also add to get, be baptized or like a pretty good person? Or so? No, it's not that at all. So I'm glad it, He threw me the curveball there. That's fine. That's fine. And that's happened before. So when they say that, I kind of I kind of go back to that point of Revelation 21.8. I go back to there. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing again, but here's what they do when they say that. I say, well, Gary has, you know, some people, they have went through this before. And Gary, had, you had mentioned in Revelation 21.8 that if you were to die, where would you go, did the Bible say? To hell. To hell. So, it doesn't matter how good a person you are. There's a lot of good people that when they die, they're going to go to hell. But to go to heaven, it has to be you put all your faith 100% in, in Jesus. So when I asked you if you were a sinner, you said what? I said yes. And I bring it back again. Yeah. And then according to the Bible, because you're a sinner, where does the Bible say that you would go there? To hell. To hell. And you do believe that Jesus died for you on the cross. Yes. And then if you ask Him to come into your heart, by you asking Him, you're putting faith in Him and Him alone. And I'll, th I'll throw this verse in something like this. Because God says that for by grace are you saved through faith. That's faith in Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith and that's not of yourself. It's not any good that you do. It's the gift of God, and that's free. Like you're holding that, it's free. You didn't get that by being good. I offered it to you as a free gift, and now it's yours because you took it. For us going out, it doesn't matter about being good. It's about asking Jesus in your heart, putting your faith in Him. So you knew if you asked Jesus to come in your heart, you go to heaven and said, and if you don't ask Him in your heart, where will you go? No. Again. Right now, Gary, do you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart then? Yes. Okay. Then let's pray. All right. Then let's pray. Remember, I always pray to God at first. So let's pray, Gary. Dear God, thank you so much for letting me meet Gary here and be able to share the most important thing in life with him, and that's this. That's knowing for sure that when you die, that you'll go to heaven. And dear God, I pray that you'd save him now before it is forever too late. And so right now, Gary... If you want to be saved from a real place called hell and have your sins paid for to go to heaven when you die, then just say this, Gary. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, know that I'm a sinner, I know that I'm a sinner. And because I sin, and because I, sin I, deserve to go to hell. I deserve to go to hell. But right now, Jesus, right now, Jesus the, best I know how, the best I know how, I ask you, Jesus, to come in my heart and save me. To come in my heart and save me. And thank you for dying for me, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I go to the last page right there. So Gary, this is so important because the devil's real. He wants to take the joy of his salvation from him. So should the first verse. So, so Gary, right now, the Bible says that last verse I shared with you, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever... For anybody, for Gary, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be for sure. So you just called upon the Lord to come in your heart, right, Gary? Yes. So that means, right, are you saved or are you unsaved? Saved, saved yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 5, part B, the Bible says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So did Jesus just come in your heart? Yes. Yeah. So if you mess up tonight, which you, chance you will, will he still be in your heart tomorrow? According to the Bible. Yeah, because he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can be every day for a week. After a week of messing up, will he still be in your heart? Yes. Yeah, because he said, I'll never leave you. Every day for a year, you mess up a lot of time, 365 and more. Will he still be in your heart then? Yeah. Because when will he leave you? Never. He said, I'll never, 50 years from now. Will he still be in your heart? 
Yeah, I'll probably be in the grave. Okay. Yeah. Your body be in the grave and you'll be in heaven. That's that's all right. Yeah. Because why? What did you do just now? Accept Jesus my Savior. Yeah, accept him into your heart. In John 3 36. He says, He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. How long is everlasting? Forever. Forever. So that means right now, since you asked Christ in your heart, or 50 years from now, no matter when you die, whenever that is, He said He'll never leave nor forsake you. He gives you everlasting life. And everlasting means what, Gary? It means forever. 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 So if you die now, because we just sat down here a little bit and talked today, where will you go if you die now? Heaven. Gary, I'm going to just grab some information just for our records real quick. And again, I get their name, address, phone number, number four. He asked a good question. I said, their age. I almost always ask for their age just for my records. If you might feel uncomfortable asking for their age, that doesn't really matter. But it's just a good idea if you want to follow up later on and kind of remind yourself who you're talking to. Hey, Gary, great to, great to meet you. All right, I'll be in touch with you then. Try okay. to stop by church Sunday. We have a great church here at his Baptist church to go to. I got my own church to go to. Hey, stop. Stop. What church is that here? Holy Trinity Catholic Church. Okay. Oh, Holy Trinity, okay. Never, ever put their church down, though. But I'm glad that he said that. I didn't tell him to, obviously. Holy Trinity, okay. okay Gary, how, if you don't mind, okay, I got their address now. You already told me that. How old are you again, Gary? 73. 73. How long have you been going to Holy Trinity, Gary? All my life. 73 years. Gary, you went to Holy Trinity for 73 years. And before you met me today, if you died, you was going to go to hell. But you have some guy you'd never met before, some young, good-looking whippersnapper comes along here from Heritage Baptist Church and takes the Bible and shows you how you can go to heaven when you die. Wouldn't you think it'd make more sense to go to the church where now you know how you can go to heaven? They'll teach you and anybody else you know how they too can go to heaven? Because if you take them back to your church, according to what you share with me, they never did share that with you before. Father John always told me I would. All right. Who's right, Gary? Father John or the Bible? The Bible, I would say. Okay. Good answer, Gary. Hope to see you Sunday at Heritage Baptist Church. Okay. All right. Good to meet you. Give him a hand, everybody. Again, that was perfect. Perfect. A couple curveballs and the whole good stuff right there. You know, that, that answer I just kind of gave at the end, I'm glad he did. When he, you never want to put anyone down, no put the church down. No, again, you know when you're talking to them, you don't make them feel uncomfortable. They're already uncomfortable enough as it is. And then if you, even though they just got saved, and your my point was very, very valid. If you can give an amen on that, you still want to. If he went to Holy Trinity Church his whole life, he's going to have a little bit of a fondness to it. So you. You got to kind of tread lightly on. You want to put their church down, but you still want to make their your point. You want them to come to church where you know if he keeps going there, he's certainly not going to get grounded and grow in the Lord. You want to try to get him to your church. Sometimes I talk to him about being baptized. I don't always do that right away, but sometimes I do because in the Book of Acts, chapter. Two, they got saved and baptized, 3,000 of them the very same day. So I try to get them to be, get baptized as soon as possible. Um, I, and I explain that to them. Baptism has nothing to do with going to heaven because they are going to heaven. So that's going to be it for our soul winning lessons the last sub few weeks. Next week we're having uh, Brother Paul, a missionary to the Philippines, will be with us next Wednesday. He was in our service about three Sunday nights ago. But I want us to do this. We may come back to this you know, later on there sometime. But I would love for nothing more. Unless I get some say, Pastor, you know what? I, I want to try that. Going through the, There's nothing greater, better practice than going through the plan for you. They're a little bit more uncomfortable. If you don't mind slipping up a time or two, and we all do. Because if you can get this down in front of our congregation, 
Let's be that much simpler for us. It's just you out there on the front line battlefield there, for sure. I mean, how many realize that we live in a crazy, crazy world right now? And all of the things that are going on can be a lead-up conversation to this, the most important topic that we could ever discuss. You can discuss politics and the craziness of the sports and the protests and all that stuff that's going on in our country and around the world. You could talk to people about that. I, I have a relative of mine that called me a couple of days ago um, about the Cincinnati Reds, an announcer that made a comment, and I'm not going to get off, off into all that. But he said, you know, you know, he said, as a cousin of mine, and, uh, he said, you know, I can talk to anyone about sports and politics. And he went to rallies, and both, both parties to kind of get his point. He said, but when it comes to things of God, I'm just not that bold. But time to be bold for God is running out. And with all my heart, the Lord is coming back and coming soon. And all the things here can lead up to going through this plan. So it won't be easy. The devil won't want you to. And by the way, let me just throw this out. The next week, I want every one of us to try to go through this plan this one time. One time. And if you can, try to set a day and try to set a time. And that would be the easiest way tonight when you go home. Try it. Or tomorrow, whatever for you. But a good chance, if you don't set a day and time, probably won't do it. Probably won't do it. Try it for us. Going frontline duty is right here. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. Let's stand if we can. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, those of you that watched on the internet, appreciate you. Be here Sunday, 11 o'clock, if you can make it. Everyone here is going to be. Can you get an amen on that? All right, let's go ahead and be dismissed in prayer for all to dismiss this for us, if you would, please. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for those kindness. Thank you so much for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that it still works. Amen. It still gets the job done. Father, thank you, God, for our church, our pastor, who is so strong, uh, leading by example on being soul winners. I pray, God, that we all be soul winners. Uh, the most important thing is a Christian is to tell other people about you. Help us, God, to tell those. Not only see them saved, but God, but see them also coming to church. Get baptized, grow, Amen. And increase, and see more fruits from that labor. Amen. All we love, we thank you for your word that never returns back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you, church. You are dismissed.